Hello everyone, today I'm going to be analysing a tournament game in Azul that I actually lost. So it's worth noting that my opponent is not actually 57 ELO. Uh, in the previous round of this tournament they did beat a 600 player. I'm not exactly sure what they're rated but they are a strong player themselves. Uh, so this is what I came to the board seeing. So my opponent was first player and they took three blue tiles. I was a little bit critical at the time thinking putting them in line three would have been a very obvious move but looking back I think they actually did make a correct decision. The reason is there's good upside for them. They have a chance of being able to finish all four rows this round. Uh, if they put it in in the third row then there's almost no chance they complete their fourth row given that there just aren't enough of any one color tiles. So this is the problem I have in the round is that there's no way I can complete my fourth row. So they definitely have a good start. It's not an insurmountable start, but it's it's quite good. My move here is taking one black tile with start player, with first player. So my alternative was two white, uh, which is also fine. The reason I took the first player instead was I didn't want to give them a blue with first player. That just seems too much. They go ahead and take the two white after some after some indecision, but I think that's a fine move. Uh, there's not too many pairs here, so I end up taking two red. The reason I take from this pile is I want to sort of combine the blues as quickly as possible, make them have to commit to it earlier, which they do. So this is an interesting point in the game. I ideally want to finish my third row, but committing to any of these means I can't. So like if I take two yellow, for example, they can take one yellow and put it in line one. Or if I take two red, they can take the single red and put it in line one. So my move here I'm quite happy with. I take the one white. Uh, this means I'll definitely be able to complete my third row. There's three yellow or three red. I'll get either one of them. Uh, in terms of position on the board, they're both okay. Putting the white in row five, I don't mind either. It's part of the column I'm already committed to. Uh, they take three yellows, which I don't think the order matters too much. It pretty much forces me to take the three reds. They get the one white in return. And they've left themselves with an option of putting the blue or the black in row in row one. So uh, I just take the two blues to commit to the same column. Uh, so overall, they've had a better first round. I am first player going into the next round, so still think it's fairly even at this point. My two options for this round are three yellow or two blue can make arguments for either one of them. Whichever one I take, my opponent will probably take the other one. They're both very good. I take the three yellows. I think there is a chance I still might be able to get blues if I focus on them enough. As expected, my opponent takes the two blues. Putting them in row three. Yeah, I can see the, the benefit in that. They've already got their white committed to row three, so yes, that does make sense. Uh, I take two whites with first player again. The alternative to that would have been trying to complete my fourth row one blue at a time. I don't particularly like the outcome of that. So if we take like if I take two blues and they take one blue, then they're left with a lot of white in the middle. They can just complete like row five easily with first player. I just decided to avoid that line. They take a single blue to complete their third row. I like that. I take two white. So the problem again with committing to one blue at a time is I won't be able to finish my fourth row. If I take one, they take the other one in line in row one. So I take the two whites for row five. Uh, 
they take two black for row four. I can understand the move. Uh, so if I take two whites for my second row, then they get two blues for the second row. I, yeah, I don't particularly want to give them two blues. I would ideally like the blues, so I don't want to group them up at all. I'm not sure if I like this move by me, but I take a red from the middle for the first row. I think I should have just committed to taking a blue. I'm not sure it would have made much of a difference though. They do take a blue, which means I definitely cannot finish this row. Placing on the second line is okay, I think. My follow-up move is I'm going to obviously try to stop them from completing the second row, but that also kills my chances of the second row because I'm combining the whites here, which they will just take. Which they do. They're quite happy with them for this uh, column as they've already completed quite a bit of it. And they are left with a tile for the first first row. I wasn't going to put a yellow on, on row 2, so I just took the red away from them to not give them some more adjacency bonuses. So I think very good play by them. By denying me the blues here, uh, it's cost me quite a few points missing out on the adjacency bonus from this white tile at the bottom. I am first player again. So looking at this board, we both want one blue tile each. If I take one, it's pretty much going to force them to take the other one. If they take one, I'm going to be forced to take the other one. So I just go ahead and take one. Another thing to note is this is a really horrible board for me because there is a lot of red and yellow, but those are the only two colors I've completed in the third row. So completing anything in the third row for me is going to be impossible this round. I think that's just a bit, a bit unlucky. There are a lot of blacks to come, so this was a turn-based mode and I was keeping track of all the colours. Uh, after this round there are still 13 black tiles to come. Uh, I do end up starting with the blue, which forces them to take the blue. My move here is a tough one. My thinking at the time was, I do not want to let them finish the fourth and the fifth row, either of them. I was also thinking, if I do take these away, they're going to be discarding a lot. Uh, I do end up taking first player with a black for line two. Um, I'm not a fan. I think this is this was the start of my downfall in this game. I think just taking either the yellows from the middle or the yellows from here would have been a better choice for the row two. It does give them three yellows for their third row, which is perfect. I take the white away just so they can't finish it, it's still good for my first first row. It's a bit slow. I think this this coming move was also an excellent move by them, by Mr. Penguin. At this stage I was thinking all these colours are going to be combined. I'll probably end up getting five red for my fifth row. They're going to want one red for their first row, which they do want but they take two reds for their first row, which means now I cannot finish my fifth row whichever color I get, be it yellow or red. So this was a move I did not see coming and was an extremely strong move. Uh, I take a black to finish this, the second row, combine all these colors. Doesn't particularly matter. They take a white. I take a black so I'm not forced to get both these piles. So they do end up discarding a lot, but I still think at this stage they're in a much better position. Uh, there's no way I'm discarding these here, so I'm sort of forced to put them in the fifth row. So I do have a column completed over them. I'm slightly ahead in points, but they're very close to a column of of their own and their board is just much fuller than mine in the, in the middle so they have a lot more choice. Though being first player here there's only one yellow tile. I do end up taking it. I'm not even sure if this is the right choice. My thinking at the time was I do not want to be going into the last round with a 
four out of five completed fifth row. Uh, that would probably lead to a lot of discarding in the last round. They take first player for the last round, which is uh, extremely strong. Just having the choice in the last round is more important than any other round. It's also a blue that I desperately need. If you look at my board, I'm missing all these blue here, and they're very important for the adjacency bonuses. Uh, I end up taking three black, because why not? They take two red for their second row. I'm actually threatening an another column on this left side of the board, so if they'd left me the red, I probably would have taken them. I'm actually not sure why I took this blue. Possible I was getting a little too blinded by this column. The column is worth 7 points, but missing out on all these adjacency bonuses, not connecting to the other rows, is not to the other tiles, is just a mistake. I think at the very least I should have taken two blues for the second line, although I guess I can still finish the, uh, do the second line with the whites, but it's likely a white's going to be taken. They take two black after some indecision, just more tiles connected to other tiles, their scoring is very good. Uh, I do get the two blues back anyway, so that's fine. They get the whites, and it's set up perfectly, so no matter which one of these they get back, they can finish their third row. That's just extremely good planning by them, and probably poor planning by me. So they finish their third row. Going into the last round, this game was already over. Just looking at the difference on our boards is insane. So while they won't be able to finish getting a, a, col a second column, which I am threatening, the whole center of their board is filled up while mine is empty. That's just missing out on so many points from these adjacency bonuses. And on top of that, their first player going into the last round. So they take two white, which is the absolute correct move. We're both fighting for a lot of whites. They want three whites for these first two rows. I want two whites for my second row and column. Uh, it's also worth noting by taking these two whites, I, c I now cannot finish this column. So if I take a white, they take a white, I take a white, they end up, they end up with both the reds, which means I can't finish the fourth row. If I take a red, then they get two of the three whites, meaning I can't finish the second row. Uh, so knowing that, I try, I try to finish it anyway, but they correctly take the whites away. At the same time, grouping up all these yellows, which also makes the second row extremely hard for me to fill without discarding a lot. Uh, at this point of the game, it's just completely over for me. I take a yellow just to get the row bonus and some important points. It does leave them with four yellows, which they happily take. Now I cannot finish the second row at all. Uh, it would have been the same either way, so if I had taken these yellows for the second row, then they would have taken a single yellow to deny me the first row. Uh, I take a black. Again, it doesn't really matter at this point. The rationale at the time was it denies them five black on their fifth row. It combines these two whites, so they're pretty much forced to take the white now. Uh, and then on the return, I get either three blue or four blue black. They take the two whites, which is denying me a lot of points. Even though they have to discard them, it's perfectly fine. Taking the blues here is better by a single point. I get three points as opposed to two points. They take the four black, just so I can't finish the last row. And I take the single red and have to discard. So I think just very good play by my opponent. They denied me key tiles at important times, denying me 
this blue in the fourth row sort of cut off this column so I was scoring one point for this white tile their board is just very filled up in the center while mine has gaps in the center everywhere which is the main reason for the 12 point difference even though I did make them discard a lot during round three it was not enough they still smashed me so I think the main takeaways from this game I needed to prioritize blue and yellow a lot heavier looking at our boards we've filled nearly the same amount of tiles I've finished 16 tiles they've finished 17 but the positioning on their tiles is just so much better so I definitely needed to prioritize these central tiles a lot higher than I did I think at times my moves were too slow taking one tile instead of multiple possibly overvaluing first player was a reason for this if anyone has any other useful analysis I'd love to hear it in the comments because I'm always trying to learn and improve thank you